Welcome to Breakthrough to Improvisation. I'm Dave Frank. This video has been designed for beginning improvisers as a way to break through to the creative approach to playing music. I'll be guiding you step by step through a series of concepts and demonstrations. After I explain and demonstrate each concept, we'll hit a practice point. You'll see a graphic highlighting each practice point at the bottom of the screen. The practice points are opportunities for you to practice and master the material of the previous section. Take the time you need to master the material of each level before going on to the next. Watch this video with your instrument or keyboard in front of you if possible. We'll be going through two or three months of lessons in the next 45 minutes, so it's okay if you don't understand it all right away. I'll be taking you through a process that will enable you to jam on a blues form. Although we'll be focusing on the blues, the concepts we'll study can be applied to any contemporary musical form. The blues is the perfect place to begin because you can sound great in a relatively short period of time, and blues playing can evoke a unique emotion that has the power to move you. At the end of this video, there will be an accompaniment section for you to practice with, or you can practice with me as we go, or use a rhythm section tape on your own. Let's begin. all have the potential to improvise music. An infinite source of music lies within each one of us, as endless as the oceans and as individual as a fingerprint. Once you learn to improvise, a lifetime of creativity is at your fingertips, awaiting your discovery. Improvisation is a science and an art. It makes immediate use of both sides of the brain, the analytical side and the creative side. As a science, Basic blues improv involves a sequence of three chords and uses one scale. The first thing to learn is the 12-bar blues progression, which is the basis for most of the blues that you hear. This is the blues progression in the key of C concert. For the keyboardist, we'll be playing the chords with the left hand, leaving the right hand free to create. I recommend that horn players, guitarists, and other instrumentalists learn this 12-bar sequence on the keyboard. Let's try it. Follow along with me. We'll be using common jazz voicings for the chords. For the C7 chord, we'll be using E, B flat, and D. For the F7, we'll use E flat, A, and D. We'll voice the G7, F, B, and E. Now we'll try the complete 12-bar blues progression in the key of C concert. Throughout this video, we'll be using the metronome at 80 beats per minute. One, two, three, four. The blues progression has a definite, recognizable sound. You may be able to anticipate what chord's going to come next. Being able to play and recognize the sound of the blues progression is the first step of improvisation. Practice this progression alone, with and without the metronome, until the sound, feel, and execution of this progression are second nature to you. The ability to place this blues progression on automatic pilot is the most important thing to master first. Let's hear the sound of this progression again. One, two, three, four.
So they're going to have a cool sound. We're going to take our first practice point here to give you a chance to practice this blues progression on your own. I recommend that you turn the tape off at this point and practice it until you're ready to go on to the next step. The way improvising works is usually on two levels. The first level is the automatic repetition of the chord progression. A good analogy is that of a carousel. On a carousel, the horses are fixed and cycle around in the same order indefinitely. In improvisation, the chords are fixed and cycle in the same order in much the same way. This is how players in jazz and blues groups stay together. Each player is constantly aware of the chords as they cycle. As the chords cycle, the soloists create a new melody against the chord progression. This is improvisation. Over even the simplest progression, you can create an infinite number of new melodies. The second part of the science of blues improvisation is the blues scale. The blues scale is a scale we'll use to improvise over the blues progression. Here are the notes of the blues scale in the key of C concert. C, E flat, F, G flat, G, B flat, and C. Underneath the blues scale is a formula you can use to map out this scale in any key. Let's listen to the sound again. Now we'll put the blues scale together with the blues progression, playing the scale up and down in sequence in quarter notes. I've brought along a friend of mine to help demonstrate some of the concepts on this video. Winton will now demonstrate playing the blues scale, first in sequence in quarter notes on the metronome at 80, and then he'll improvise the order of the notes. One, two, three, four. We'll take a practice point to work at the material at this level.
The next step of blues improvisation is the designing of riffs. A riff is a short melody, usually composed of between three and seven notes. This is an example of a blues riff. We'll take all the notes from the blues scale for now. Each riff is a complete musical statement, like a simple phrase from a foreign language. Now we'll repeat this riff over and over against the blues progression. You can really get the feel of the blues through this exercise. Try it one more time. One, two, three, four. I'm following along with the blues progression, feeling the pulse, anticipating the next chord. I'm playing each riff with feeling, feeling it as a complete little musical statement, followed by a rest. Make sure to feel the underlying pulse behind this exercise. The next step is to alternate two riffs against the blues progression. The idea here is to split your brain. One part of your brain is maintaining the blues progression, and the other part is keeping track of the riffs. Horn players, guitarists, and other instrumentalists Feel the blues form while concentrating on the riffs in rhythm. Let's take a practice point for you to work on this idea of alternating two riffs in rhythm against the cycling blues progression. Now we're going to improvise the placement of the same two riffs. Play the riffs in any order you feel like, hearing and cycling the blues progression and feeling the underlying pulse. Try it again. Three, four.
At first, when you work at this level, you may feel like you're juggling while riding a unicycle. The secret is to master riding the unicycle first, and then add the juggling. Master the chords first, then add the riffs. Try many combinations of two riffs, first strictly alternating them, then improvising the order. You can spend from between two to four weeks at this level, deepening your intuitive grasp of the blues progression and experimenting with different riff orders. Write your own riffs using blues scale notes, each riff containing from three to seven notes. In addition to using this video, I recommend you check out my book series called Joy of Improv, which is a complete curriculum for the aspiring improviser. In Joy of Improv, you can find hundreds of blues riffs to inspire your own creation of a wide variety of riffs. We'll take a practice point now for you to work at this level. We're now ready to go beyond the basics into free blues improvisation. In order to have the freedom to improvise, it's important to understand first the improviser's attitude. Improvisation is a process of exploration, not one of rigid rules or perfection. As you begin improvising, remember to relax, enjoy the process, and don't judge your early results. You can learn as much from your so-called mistakes as you can from your perfect improvisations. The attitude of the improviser is the attitude of non-judging, of yourself and of your playing. Have fun and experiment. Over time, your improvs will naturally improve. We'll start by creating riffs consisting of quarter notes, using the notes of the blues scale against the blues progression. At first, create short riffs. Think of each riff as a short statement, followed by a rest. Start easily, creating quarter note riffs using only blue scale notes. Trust the process. After each phrase, your inner ear will tell you where to go next. Let's try another one. One, two, three, four. On one hand, I'm listening to the sound of the progression, always feeling the underlying beat. I'm just following the flow of quarter notes, using blue scale notes, playing whatever occurs to me. Keep it simple and experiment. If you lose the progression, just start again and improvise. Every riff is a short statement. Now we're ready to expand into the use of swing eighth notes. Swing eighth notes are part of the rhythmic backbone of the improviser's language, and they account for much of the difference in feel between jazz and classical music. This is an example of classical or straight eighth notes. And this is an example of jazz or swing eighth notes.
The flow of the swing eighth note line is the most important secret of improvisation. The infinite flow of music within each one of us has its root in rhythm. And the first way to contact the rhythm of improv is to tune into the flow of the swing eighth note line. The marvelous thing about improvisation is that once the science of improv is studied, in this case the blues progression and the blues scale, and you tap into the swing eighth note flow, much of the actual process of improvisation flows through you. With just a little experience, you may feel as though the music is being given to you to play, spontaneously and without much effort. Each improvisation is like a snowflake, unique, surprising, and existing only in the moment. Let's begin improvising phrases in swing eighth notes. At first, we'll keep the phrases short. Concentrate on creating simple phrases with blue scale notes. Follow each phrase with the rest, then continue with another phrase that occurs naturally to you. Let's have Winton back to demonstrate this principle on the horn. Legato. That's the way to do it. Every riff is a statement. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Just let it happen. Yeah, just play what you feel. Excellent. Wrap it up. We'll take a practice point for you to get a chance to work at the material on this level, creating short riffs out of blues notes and swing eighth note rhythms. Now we're going to let the improv line flow on longer. Creating longer lines gives the music a strong sense of movement and direction. Here's the secret. Group the swing eighth notes in groups of four with a slight accent on the first of the four notes. This is what I call feeling in fours. Feeling the music this way puts you directly in the flow of rhythm and forms the basis for a naturally flowing line. Feeling in fours is another of the basic secrets of improv that will jumpstart your creative process. I'll demonstrate this for a while, and then we'll ask Winton to try it on his horn.
try it again. The eighth notes are grouped in groups of four, like this. One, two, three, four, 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 one. So the improv line flows longer. Feeling in fours puts the music right in the rhythm. It really starts to sound authentic at this point. Let's go a little bit longer. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. The left hand is following the progression. The underlying beat is always felt as a pulse. And the right hand plays a longer line. It really flows. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Let's ask Winton to try this concept on the horn. Okay. Make it real legato. Better. Good. Take a rest. the first of the four. There you go. Nice. There you go. Swing, man. Excellent. Rest. Beautiful. Good. Wrap it up. Now we'll take a practice point to give you a chance to work on this principle. As in normal conversation, the language of improv usually consists of a combination of long and short phrases. One of the universal principles of improvisation is that anything done for too long becomes boring. We're looking to create an interesting balance between the elements, like a master chef who knows exactly the right amount to add of each ingredient. Your inner ear can act as a guide during the process of improvisation. If you follow your musical impulses, you will naturally know what to play in every moment. Let's try combining long and short swing eighth note phrases. When you begin improvising, it's best to limit each improvisation to one or two choruses, or once or twice around the blues progression, so as not to run on. After each improvisation, stop com completely, take a breath, then begin again. Stopping for a moment between improvs will charge your creative battery. With a little experience, your inner ear will tell you exactly when to choose a long or a short phrase. At this level, we're concentrating on creating improvised combinations of short and long phrases using swing eighth notes and notes from the blue scale. Remember to go slowly, keep the chord progression in your ear, and follow your musical impulses. If you miss a note or lose a progression, just stop, breathe, laugh, and start again.
Let's try another. Let's start with a short phrase. Another one. Let's stay with that. One more. Let's let it flow. Feel in fours. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. How about a short one? One more. Follow that inner ear. You get the idea? Let's take a practice point at this level for you to work on putting together short and long swing eighth note phrases. One way to develop an improvisation is to try to answer each phrase with the phrase that follows it. This question-answer approach helps the music to tell a story. There are three ways to try this approach. The first way is to imitate the shape of the phrase. The second way is to imitate the rhythm, but not necessarily the shape of the phrase. These two ways are two ways to consciously relate phrases to each other. Consciously relating phrases to each other when you improvise helps the music move along and helps you to tell a story. The last approach we'll take to relating phrases is to answer each phrase conversationally. In this approach, you can imagine two people having a conversation. The second person will respond naturally to the phrase said by the first person with a phrase that complements or answers the original phrase. There are infinite ways to respond to any musical phrase. Imitation may or may not play a part. Just entering into improvisation with the mindset of imitating a conversation will give your improv direction and coherence. To illustrate this approach, Winton will talk to me using a musical phrase, and I'll respond to him with a phrase that comes naturally to me.
Sandra. All right. Thanks. Now I'll improvise by myself, keeping this approach in mind. Listen to hear how one person playing can imitate the flow of two people talking. Answer the phrase, again, follow the impulse, stay with the idea, go somewhere else, your inner ear tells you what to do, just go slow and follow it, a short phrase, answer it, wrap it up. Again, we're concentrating on creating long and short phrases, relating each phrase conversationally to the next one. We're continuing to use notes exclusively from the blues scale in swing ace for now. By concentrating on repetitive musical elements, you can begin to create your own music. Let's take a practice point now for you to work at the material at this level. Adding eighth note triplets can add a rhythmic punch to your improvised line. The eighth note triplets are played evenly, as opposed to the staggered rhythm of the swing eighth notes. Triplets can be added in three ways. First, triplets can be interspersed within the swing eighth line. Triplets are usually placed in the beginning or in the middle of the eighth note line. Next, we can try to create a short line of only triplets. Start with just a couple of triplets, and then make the triplet line longer as you progress. The last thing we'll do with triplets is to create longer triplet lines. Longer lines made up exclusively of triplets brings the energy of improv way up. The secret to the longer triplet line is to nail the end of the line melodically and usually on the downbeat.
It will be helpful for you to write out choruses of the blues entirely in triplets. Writing out solos on music paper will help you to adapt to the quicker thought process that improvising in triplets requires. You can find an example of a triplet blues chorus in the material that accompanies this video. Let's take a practice point now. Work on incorporating triplets into the eighth note line, then create short lines exclusively with triplets, and then extend the lines and make longer triplet lines. The final element of improvisation we'll study on this video is the use of sixteenth notes, or double time lines. Like eighth note triplets, the sixteenth notes are played evenly. Using sixteenth notes in your improv packs a wallop. The secret again, as in the triplet lines, is to create melodic lines that are nailed on the end, usually on the downbeat. Writing out sixteenth notes improvisations on manuscript paper will help you to get the hang of thinking so quickly. When you add sixteenth notes into your playing, start with short lines and gradually extend them. Some students may find that sixteenth note lines require an instrumental technique that is above their present level. The Joy of Improv series contains a series of technical exercises that will help you to develop your technique to the level required to improvise in double time. Try it again. I'm still thinking melodically. Just fast. All blue scale notes for now. Nailing the end of the line. Let's take a practice point. Try incorporating sixteenth notes into your line, first a couple of sixteenth note groups at a time, and then extend the line. Let's review the process we studied on this video. Improvisation is the spontaneous creation of new melodies against a cycling sequence of chords. First we learned the 12 bar blues progression, which is the anchor for blues improvisation. Then we added the blues scale, first in quarter notes up and down in sequence. Then we improvise the direction of the blue scale against the chords. Staying in quarter notes. We explored riffs composed of notes of the blue scale, repeating one riff against the chords, 
first strictly. Then we took two riffs and alternated them again against the blues chords. From there we started alternating riffs in an improvisational way, however we felt like. From there we started improvising short riffs using quarter notes. Then we extended the riffs into swing eighth notes. This allowed the line to extend. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. To add excitement, we added triplets. First within the eighth note line. And then we created lines composed entirely of triplets. Finally, we created double time lines using sixteenth notes. The actual process of improvisation is to combine all of these elements and more when you play. Here are some important guidelines to remember. The backbone of improvisation is the swing eighth note line. Always use 70 to 80 percent swing eighth note lines in your improvisations, answering each phrase by imitating musical elements of the phrase before it, or by thinking conversationally. Add other elements, such as riffs, triplets, and sixteenth notes, to add energy to your playing. After using these other elements, come back to the swing eighth note line and continue cruising. Use your inner ear to direct the flow of improvisation and to regulate the use of these different elements. Your inner ear will give you impulses that will tell you what type of element to add and when to add them. Remember, anything done too long will become boring. If you follow your natural musical impulses, you are using your inner ear guide. Develop the freedom to improvise by adopting the improviser's attitude. Always have fun, explore, and experiment. Don't judge yourself or you're playing. <laughs> Improvisation is a unique ability that develops over time into a marvelous process of artistic expression. It is the experience of the unity of your soul, your mind, and your fingers, spontaneously working together to create music. I hope you've had a taste of the joy of improv as you watch this video, and I encourage you to keep studying, keep practicing, and above all, keep swinging. To conclude this tape, I'll improvise on the blues for a while. Listen to the sound of the concepts in action, and follow the blues chord sequence along with me as I play. Following the improv, you'll hear an accompaniment provided for you to use as a practice aid. Practice incorporating one element at a time, then combine elements, and then play free. Always have fun, explore, and experiment. Don't judge yourself or your playing.